So good morning everyone and welcome over here to SeaWorld San Antonio. I've actually been out to SeaWorld San Antonio a couple times, but we have made the drive from Fort Worth. It took us about four and a half hours to drive out here. We're actually out here for a couple days to come out here and to Six Flags. But today, SeaWorld. So I do I did upgrade my pass, so I did get the platinum version here, getting us getting us closer parking as well. And so Kayla's with me as well. So we will be using her disability pass throughout the day, but it did not look very busy. They got some pretty cool attractions here that we we're hoping to ride, including the brand new Texas Stingray, Texas tallest and fastest wooden coaster. So it's gonna be really good. But we do need to stop, we need to go on in through security and head on into SeaWorld San Antonio. So once you enter in through security, there are three places you can go to. We've got Aquatica, which is right in front of us. But then off to the right where we are heading, SeaWorld San Antonio, right over there. And then I think Discovery Point, which they're just like Discovery Island, is somewhere off to the side. I saw a map over here, but see there's security right there. And then they have a big map right here that shows you where everything is. So, ah, so yeah, you keep going all the way down to the left right here. Like so, so you come in, we're right here. SeaWorld's entrance is right here, and this is where all the stuff is. So it's gonna be a really, really fun day. I'm gonna ride, hopefully ride a few things, get some rides under my belt that I haven't gotten, like the new Texas Stingray, the Wave Breaker Coaster, get to ride a Classic and Steel Eel and Great White, and then get to see some other things while we're here. So just entered into SeaWorld San Antonio, and it's kind of funny, because right at the very front, right here is like the Sesame Street area. They've got the uh, Grover's Boxcar Derby, which is a much smaller version than the one out in Orlando. But I think so, we had to stop over here at the Harbor uh, restaurant so that Kayla can redeem her um, all day dining today. And then I think we'll head straight over to the side with Texas Stingray and work our way around. And then if we have time, we'll probably do it multiple times, mul other rides multiple times. So their SeaWorld is called SeaWorld Bay of Play. So again, their version of SeaWorld or Sesame, you know, not SeaWorld, of sea Wo SeaWorld San Antonio's version of Sesame Street and everything, because you have the one out in Orlando, and you have Busch Gardens, which has their version of it. So this is kind of their version of theirs. So it's about the same, kind of see the same kind of rides, but it's more themed towards like sea life and everything else like that, since you are closer to the water here. So another thing they also have going on is they have the SeaWorld Seven Seas Food Festival, which again, we normally don't come on the weekends. So it's gonna be a little bit different because they actually have everything open. So like here's Hawaii. And again, like most places, you can get a sampler, lanyard, and because I'm a pass holder, I could technically actually get three free sample items, but we have the all day dining thing, so that's a big reason why we don't want to use it there. So, but come up onto Steel Eel, which is actually a lot closer than I thought we were. Um, so, we'll probably work our way around to these rides, probably have lunch, probably do a couple of shows, and then maybe hit these before the park closes again. So, try to get on these a couple times. Um, I do not know 100% what the policy is on GoPro wrist straps. Um, the guy at the guest, relation, guest services said that some rides do, some rides don't. So, we'll see. Oh, it looks like some of the rides, looks like Steel Eel closes at 5.45 tonight. Okay, so I didn't try riding with the um, wrist strap right away, but I think we're gonna go over and try to do Wave, Wave Breaker, which is the launching coaster over here. And I'm gonna see if I can take my um, rear strap on that. Now, this, some rides will allow you to take it on, some will not allow you to take it on. So I'm gonna see, because it sounds like Steel Eel is okay with the three point, which is what I have. Um, and so we may come back to try to do that, so I can have you on the wrist strap on the GoPro, which would be really fun to do. So hopefully we can do it on this, but it seems like they put all the coasters all in one general area, because right above us, that's Steel Eel. And then Wave Breaker is the launching coaster here, and then we'll probably work our way over to Texas Stingray afterwards. And then maybe hit some lunch, try to find a show to watch. So Steel Eel is really fun because it has a lot of these little bunny hills, but it's not aggressive. As Kayla said, it's not aggressive ejector hill. Because like Mako at SeaWorld Orlando has a lot of ejector hill time. So it's kind of the difference between the two, because this is an older, I think this is Morgan and Morgan. Um, so it's an older, and I think this is the oldest um, coaster in the park, like big coaster. So 
we went at Steel Eel, so now we're coming over here to do Wave Breaker, which is the launching coaster here over the water. Um, and we are getting clarification that I think I can bring my GoPro onto rides. Um, so it sounds like originally you need a three point strap, but I'm gonna ask you if they let me to bring it on this one. Ooh. <laughs> You're just like, hold on to something. <laughs> you got a dilemma. You don't know what to hold on to. I'm nervous. just got off of um, Wave Breaker, the rescue coaster, which is a long, uh, launching coaster. And yes, for this one, they let me bring my wrist strap on because it keeps it free, um, my hands free. So if I had, if I wanted to like, wear a shoulder harness, which has the shoulders and the chest, which is a chest mount, I can ride. So that was a really fun one though. It was kind of small, not super intense, but I think steel is still, still top one. So I think we're gonna head over to the great white one, which is the B&M uh, Batman clone. I think it's just inverted. I think so. It's just the opposite. So on most Batmans, you go down to the left. I think this one goes down to the right. Or else I'm confusing that with something else. So we'll see if we can keep taking the uh, GoPro on things. So we're actually gonna go try to find something to eat right now. But we may come back and try to do the Great White, which is actually no. This is the same way that normal Batman's the Six Flags would go. So it's just another B and M inverted. It's just a clone of what most. Batman's, but this is a cool shot right here if you're going by. So it looks like uh, the Great White is starting off. Now look, it's not a very busy day because of the cloud covers really kind of making people not want to come. So, but let's see, uh, we'll see it go down here. It's going to be a really, really cool shot of it going by. Yeah, so it's, it's not special like Montu or any of the other ones. Though it does have a pretty cool over the walkway right there into the um, cobra roll or barrel roll. So the we're heading over here to do the smokehouse barbecue, which it looks like is very similar to what's over at Bush Gardens. So we're gonna go over and try to eat that. But then we're right across the way from the brand new GCI coaster in the Texas Stingray. So you may notice this that this coaster is a wooden coaster but it has a steel base. But it makes it more, um, it makes it last a little longer. It makes it more like, like it just, it gets more bang for your buck out of it. So I think we'll try to do this, but I love the tight turns on this. So and I also love the fact that they have a nice little Texas Stingray right out here. But then if you turn around, they have some little like, like thrill rides over here. So you got a little like a swing pendulum type ride. You got this, looks like little like spinny ride. Don't know exactly what the name is, but yeah. Oh, and then right across the way, turtle reef so somewhere where they have some turtles so we stopped at the smokehouse barbecue which is actually just down the way from the texas stingray and we uh, got the barbecue sampler and so because of the all-day dining um this ended up being 25 dollars but because we only paid what 35 for it we only had to eat one more thing somewhere else to get our money's worth out of it so it should be end up really good it smells really good so we were looking for where the um, orca show is, and it's actually right here. So they have it at 2, 3.30, and 5.30. And so, starting to do this weird misting thing right now, which we're trying to get ahead of before it got too bad. But I think we will we'll try to go over and do that. 
um, once the first one happens. But we are going to head over here to the brand new coaster in the Texas Stingray because this was this was supposed to start out the lineup of all the brand new coasters coming to SeaWorld Parks, but it's the only one that got a chance to open first before the pandemic shut everything down. So, so I think we're going over here. Got to put stuff in a locker. I'm going to try to take the GoPro. I'm not 100% sure they'll let me take it on. They tell me no, then not no big deal. I'm not that worried about it. Front or back on that? I like the back. Front's really good on that one. The back whips you a lot more. So not only did we ride that, we rode that three times and they let me take the GoPro on. So you in probably, in 10 minutes, oh my God, 10 minutes we rode that three times. So once in the front, once in the back and once in the middle. To get an idea what the best spot is, front row is definitely the best. But man, that is a good, good ride. It's not very tall, but boy, it holds that speed. Like there's no tomorrow though. It is. Honestly, so far, best ride we've ridden so far. So I do like how Guy Harvey has a very big impact on these parks. So right next to the Great White, they have this. At Orlando, next to Mako, they have a Mako shark. So, but we gotta put ourselves in a locker for this. And then they, the person over at Texas Stingray told us with the, with the pass that Kayla has, we need to go up the exit. So we're gonna try that out on this. I'm not 100% sure they're gonna let me have this wrist strap on this ride or Steel Eel. But if I only got the Stingray and Wave Breaker, that's fine. Okay, so that one, very um, underwhelming compared to what we've ridden today so far. Um, it's very much just a Batman, but it's a very it's very smooth, and I'll give it credit for that. Very smooth being an inverted, and all the loops and everything were great. But so far, in list of these rides, Steel, so Stingray is number one, Steel Eel number two, Wave Breaker, and then this one. But I'm not saying they're all bad. This one's just underwhelming so we're actually gonna head back over do the stingray one more time and then we're gonna go see the orca show so i'm not gonna record 
The only thing I'm going to record on next will probably be the Steel Eel if they let me do it. Because the Great White, they wouldn't because they say for that ride, you need this harness, which is fine. But not that I actually anticipated not being able to take the GoPro on that one. And so all they did was they just had it, they put it in the basket over on the side. So we go over, do Stingray one more time, and I think then we'll go watch one of the shows. All right, so we went ahead and did the Stingray one more time. Pretty sure we're gonna go back and ride it a couple more times for the end of the day. We're gonna over here watch the Orca Encounter. Um, I'm not gonna record any of this show just because of all the controversy around these, these shows. So we're gonna go ahead and enjoy this, take a nice little break from the ride before we uh, hit probably some of the other sh like shows as well, maybe a few more rides. So I will say the Orca Encounter show, pretty cool show. Um, Definitely something I was not going to record, but definitely a really cool show. So I would say if you're really interested, check that out. Really educational as well. So now we officially done a full entire lap of the park. And so now I think we're going to stop over here and try to get something to eat over here at the harbor, um, like food place. And then uh, we're trying to look at doing some of the other shows since we did most of the rides this morning. Or like this morning slash early afternoon. But yeah, so if you're also curious, they do have all day lockers so you can rent. So those are right here. Um, but I like doing the um, the movable lockers here because they're only $9. I only have to use it five times and I've already used it, I think, six times now. So got my money's worth out of it. So that I definitely think that's the best deal doing it. So we actually stopped off. We were going to talk about maybe getting something at the Harbor House, but we think we're going to save that for dinner because like so we can eat every about 90 minutes. We're super hungry, but we just wanted a snack. So right up here next to where Sesame, the back of Sesame Street is, is Spanky's fresh cut fries where they have like buffalo chicken fries, a load of baked, load of potato, baked potato fries, uh, chili cheese fries, all sorts of different fries. So we ended up stopping and getting some loaded baked potato fries and a Sprite because you do get a meal and a drink usually. And then Kayla went off over to the Harbor House and got big things of water for us to drink. So we might run into a small bit of issue. Um, that was not lightning, it was just a camera behind us. The rain. Um, I think there's supposed to be a little, there's a little blob of rain coming towards us, so we may try to go hide for a little bit somewhere. I'm not 100% sure where yet, but yeah, you kind of see off through the trees, because that's the main entrance of the park right there. Um, it's kind of been, it's been hit or miss all day, so hopefully it holds off just a little bit longer while we finish up with the rest of our day at SeaWorld, because we want to try to stay till, all the way till close. It's only three more hours, and it's kind of chilly now, so it's actually kind of nice. It's not as hot like normally is, and the rain's starting. All right, so we're trying to get to the Sea Line Show, which is actually right here next to the Harbor Market, because it's starting to rain. So they have the Sea Lion High Show, so hopefully this is all covered. But this is where they have all the sea lions and everything, so hopefully, no, not full. OC University is giving away two scholarships, one in academics, and one and athletics. Oh, okay, we can do this. 
study. All right, you are going to study anything. You pick this from dying. Are you ready? I believe in you. Oh, I am. So we left out of the show, so we're actually gonna try to ride Steel Eel and maybe Texas Stingray one more time. But the only downside is this mist has shown back up again, so it's so just something we're gonna have to deal with probably for the rest of the time we're here. Because we are gonna try to go see the Beluga Whale Show at 4.30, so we got about an hour until that happens. And so we're thinking we could show up, because we showed up to the, the Sea Lion High Show like five minutes before it was supposed to start, and we had a pretty good, stop, a good spot for it. So it looks like they shut down a couple, some of the attractions due to the mist that's coming in. Or maybe they're just down for some other issues and they're trying to get the ride restarted. Interesting, because now they just cranked up the uh, main lift again. Uh -oh. All I know is we luckily got to ride it earlier, so it's not that big of a deal if we don't get to ride it again. We like to ride it again, but we're kind of like glad we've we've got to ride Texas Stingray as many times as we have today because that's a good ride. Well, the rain is starting to pick up. So Steel Eel was closed, but they ran it. But I think what the issue is, is that because of the rain, probably a lot of the braking system is having issues because again, remember, it is not designed like the Florida parks are where you have the possibility of rain no matter what. Because like Wave Runner, it's a tire launching system. So that's why Wraith Runner's not running. We did see Ray White and I think I saw the Stingray running. So might try to check those out, hopefully before the, the, the show. Oh, wow. I like how they have all the different penguins on the top. So penguin chicks. So if they have chicks back there, I don't they have any, but like if they have any, they go back in the back area right there. Oop, it's a couple jumping out of the water. Like how they're all running around in there. Look at how many of them. They have a lot of little ones in here too. Woo! I think I, saw, I, think I just saw him pop out too. It's definitely not like Orlando's where you go into an Antarctic area. I love all the ones on the rock up there. Yeah. Even the snow is falling from the top. Ooh. Oh gosh. Oh, they're on the move. Oh, they're all coming together. Um, what's going on? I think. Oh, that's why. I just like how they all came running. Oh my gosh. Look at all of them in the water. 
That was funny. Oh, look, stampede. stampede. All right. So it sounds like the steel eel is back up and running. So we are going to go ahead and try to do this even with the mist running or falling. Um, just to try to be have one more time. So we just got done with Steel Eel, and actually right when we got onto the lift hill, this mist went away. So I think we're gonna head over and try to do Wave Breaker really quick before heading over to the Beluga Whale Show. Um, and then probably after that, we'll probably go to Pacific Point to the Seal sea Lions, the Seals and the Sea Lion, and then try to do some more, maybe another ride on Stingray, or calling it a day from San Antonio SeaWorld, or SeaWorld San Antonio. All right, so we gotta put all stuff in the locker. I'm not gonna take the camera on with me this time just because I already did it once earlier, so put you guys away, do Wave Breaker really quick. So very reminiscent of being in Florida, because now some lightning has come in and now all the rides shut down. We were lucky to get on Steel Eel and Wave Breaker, but the problem is that Wave Breaker, one of their consoles was having issues bringing it back in, so we sat on this little run right here for almost 10 minutes with this with this wet, uh, rain kind of falling on us, so unfortunately like, it, we got a little more wet than we like to. And they keep telling us that there is lightning in the area, so that's going to make it a problem. So we're going to try to see if we can get over to the Blue Whale Show, which actually starts in 10 minutes. Maybe we try to go over there in time for that. Well, this is uh, very much feeling like being at SeaWorld Orlando because of this rain. The whole reason we wanted a break from, from Orlando was because, well, didn't really want the rain. So fortunately, it looks like it's getting going to get heavier, So and it's just getting, it looks like it's about where it's going to be for the foreseeable future. Um, I think our plan is try to go back up to the harbor market, try to get something to eat. And there's a, unfortunately a good chance we may be calling it a day. Now, luckily, we did every roller coaster. We did not do Journey to Atlantis because it looked kind of boring. Um, and we got to see two out of the three shows. We wanted to see Blue Whale Show, but now we're on the complete opposite side of the park. The biggest thing is we got caught on Wave Breaker. I really wanted to do Stingray one more time, but... I don't think they're coming up because this looks like it's here for the rest of, for at least the next couple hours and see where it closes at six. Well, when I say it really feels like Florida, I am, we're drenched. I mean, it's kind of annoying because we, we, we had this whole trip planned to come down here for today to SeaWorld and hopefully tomorrow PS Texas and it's supposed to really storm all day again tomorrow, so just kind of see what goes on with that, so. But figure something out. Well, unfortunately, even though the, we the main weather has passed, um, we're completely soaked. We got a lot done here. Got two of the three shows done, did every coaster, everything except Journey to Atlantis and the little kitty ride. Ate at three places, so I think, uh, I think we can say we got quite a lot done. 
I think we're just gonna head out from here now though because it is not gonna get any better, it sounds like. All right, so now we are gonna go ahead and make our way out of SeaWorld San Antonio. Fortunately, due to the weather, we're concerned that some of the rides probably will not be up the rest of the night. They close about an hour. Um, but I mean, we got a lot done. I'm telling you what, that Texas Stingray is a good coaster. And I mean, the only thing we really didn't like was the Great White. Um, but I mean, overall, it was a fantastic trip. I can't complain, it was a great time out. We had a good time, even though the weather did come in last minute. It uh, was not too bad, so we gotta go this way. Yeah. Um, so, but with all that being said, as we do head out from a fantastic trip out to SeaWorld San Antonio, we will see y'all next time. Oh, 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 oh,